practices. So you start with that, and then this is the second part where you really start making a, um, uh, putting a plan together and the action part of it. How do you put it together um, and what you do? Angela has been with uh, the Alliance since uh, March, actually. So she started two weeks before we all went remote. <laughs> Uh, and uh, has had an interesting time, you know, exploring and, and figuring everything out. But she actually has a really extensive background in marketing and has done um, kind of been a first time marketing person for a lot of organizations. So um, for those of you that maybe aren't as familiar with marketing, she's been in your shoes and she can answer a lot of questions and has had to just figure it out. Uh, just like you. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Angela and have her get started. Great. Jen, I hit record, but can you just verify that that's going? Okay. We're good. <laughs> I just want to make <laughs> sure. Uh, everyone, please bear with us. If we have any tech issues, it is Monday morning. So that's all I will say on that issue. But welcome, everyone. Um, I'm excited to see all of you again, a lot of friendly faces in the crowd. And today we're gonna get started with some polls first uh, that will help me know more about marketing in uh, your organization. And then we're gonna get straight into answering some of your most frequently asked questions. So I'm just gonna launch those polls really quick. So the first poll I want to know is, have you participated in Arizona Gives Day in the past? That looks like I'm getting a resounding yes. <laughs> but we have 17 people on here who haven't participated before. So welcome new people. And to the people who have before, Welcome back, and I hope that uh, this webinar will provide you with some resources that will be helpful. And if you uh, have anything that you have done that I talk about, please feel free to weigh in on the chat. All right, our second question is, are you planning on doing any paid advertising for an Arizona Gifts Day campaign? So this helps me know what kinds of questions to anticipate. Um, and maybe I can change your mind a little. So we'll see about that. I'm seeing a lot of no's, a lot of not sure's, a few yeses. So I'm going to take a cautious bet and say that a bunch of the not sure's are either because um, you haven't figured out what your year is going to look like yet. And that's, you know, that's perfectly acceptable. It's early January. Um, or because you aren't quite sure if you have the budget. So there's a few things I'm gonna recommend for that. Uh, and you can see we've got mostly not sure. So let's hope that at the end, you'll have a different opinion of that. Our third, third poll will be, <clears throat> do you have a person, either staff or volunteer, that will be dedicated to helping your Arizona Gives Day marketing? Uh, that often also informs whether or not you're planning on doing any paid advertising. So we've got a lot of yeses, that's very exciting. Some no's, some not sure's. Just gonna give you a minute more. All right, I'm gonna end it, I'm gonna share. Looks like mostly yes, so that's great. I hope I'm talking to most of those marketing people. Um, some have no, some are not sure, you know, you can do it even if you don't have a dedicated marketing person, I promise. And my last question is, what is your experience with marketing? You can take that as you, or you can take it as you, your organization. So you're a marketing expert, you've been doing it for years, you're a marketing newbie, and you're looking to learn or you're somewhere in the middle where you've done this before, but you wouldn't necessarily consider yourself an expert. Let me be real honest. The uh, seven people who are saying are experts perhaps should be leading this more than me. 
Um, I, I like to think of myself as constantly learning. Um, so welcome everyone. Looks like we have a pretty wide range. Great, let me end those polls. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, just so you know, for this, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat box. Jen will be interrupting me as she sees fit to ask those questions. And we will also have dedicated question times at the end. All right, so one of our biggest questions that we receive is, how do we get more people to be involved and how and know about Arizona Gives Day? So the Alliance, we spend a lot of time and money promoting Arizona Gives, but to be honest, there's only so much that we can do as one organization. And so there are ways to help Arizona Gives Day in general, and also to help your organization. So I broke it down into a few parts. And the first group of people that we're gonna talk about are your board members, your employees, and your volunteers. So these are people that we know are already fully committed to your organization and cause area. And what we see most is that organizations don't reach out to these people and ask for their help. So what we recommend is that you send them an email, you give them a call, you don't assume that they know about Arizona Gives Day, right? And you tell them, hey, we're doing Arizona Gives. Do you know when that is? Do you know what that is? Because I'm betting that you do have people in these groups who, even though they're dedicated to your cause, may not know um, what's happening. So you may be saying, but Angela, these people are already giving a lot to our organization. So how could they possibly give more? And I would say, most organizations haven't had the pleasure of connecting with all of these people in a super in-depth way. So we don't know what more they can give until we ask them. And by asking, the worst thing that happens is that we receive a no answer. But I think that if we approach them with varying asks that have different levels of time commitments, we may be pleasantly surprised by what we receive. So it's not that we just say, hey, do you know about Arizona Gives? It's that we say, hey, do you know about Arizona Gives? And do you think you would be willing to assist us in help making our Arizona Gives campaign the best it could possibly be? So a few potential asks that you could ask these populations for are for them to engage with your content. So you can ask them to share your content in your emails and your social media with their networks and comment on social in particular, you know, as that changes the algorithm, more people see it, the more people who engage. You can ask them to send you either a typed or video explanation as to why they participate with your organization and give you permission to use it in your advertising for social media especially with the fact that Zoom is everywhere, it's really easy to tape ourselves giving those, you know, testimonials about how great this organization is and why we do what we do with them. You can host a competition using fundraising pages. So I know a lot of boards have friendly fundraising competitions each year. Um, and so using Arizona Gives already built in fundraising page functions, then it could allow your boards to be more active participants in the giving season, where you could assign them into teams, you could ask them, you know, to participate, to spread that out, to have those friendly competitions among the, amongst themselves. You could ask them to help host a virtual event the day of, Last year, we saw a ton of really cool and innovative events happening throughout the state. So why not ask these people if they could potentially host one for you so that that takes the onus off of some of your staff members. You could ask them to volunteer to help with your marketing AZ gives on your social media platforms. So personally, I cannot tell you how many organizations I have volunteered for doing something completely different. And as soon as they found out I have experience doing marketing, I've been asked to help them manage their social platforms. 
especially for small organizations without a dedicated marketing person, this is ideal to help you hold a marketing campaign that you otherwise might not be able to put the time investment into. So the next group we're gonna talk about are past donors. So how can we mobilize them? Well, the key thing is that we want them to know about Arizona Gives Day in advance. And in the same way that we have targeted asks for our board members and our volunteers, we wanna make sure we have targeted asks um, for those donors. <clears throat> so, you know, that can include asking them to participate in early giving. It can include asking them to participate in monthly giving. Um, we could ask them to really focus on a power hour so that you could potentially raise more money and get the, those uh, prizes that we offer. They could be general day of, just send us a gift on those days. Um, but making sure you have those targeted asks makes a difference. You also might wanna consider looking at who donated before and what you could do to kind of up their donation this year. So if we had someone who, don't, who signed up for a monthly giving at $5 a month, maybe you ask them this year if they could up their donation level to $10 a month. In general, that's not a huge ask, but that might be something that they're willing to do. And if you had 20 people who were willing to do that, that's significant. Just a note here, so especially for people who haven't participated before, um, we do our best on our side here at the Alliance to mobilize past donors. So we maintain the contacts of all of the donors of Arizona Gives Day, and we reach out to them and let them know about upcoming dates and how to give, et cetera. But emails and communications are always more powerful when they come from you, the nonprofits, and you tell those donors what impact their donations have on their community. We can only tell them so much, um, but you can show them through images, through video, through posts. And then finally, the audience we all want to get is the new donor. So first, I'm gonna say that organizations, you really need to make sure that your Arizona Gives Day profiles and pages are up to date and robust. You know, you can have photos on there, um, you can have all sorts of explanations, but the more that you fill that out, the more successful you're gonna be. Because if we look at last year, which was my first Arizona Gives Day on the Alliance, I cannot tell you how happily surprised I was when I was watching donations come in and there were so many individual donors that were giving to multiple organizations in one giant donation. Jen, do you remember how many uh, was our most organizations donated by a single person last year? I don't recall last year's number, but I can tell you on Giving Tuesday, um, we had one person who made a single transaction that had 20 donations in it to 20 different organizations. Um, and we had 10 people who gave to more than 10 organizations on Giving That's Tuesday. That's huge. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, part of it is that those people want to see what organizations are out there and who they can donate to. So those Arizona Gives Day profiles are so important. They can see you, they can donate to multiple organizations all at once. And I'm hoping this year that I will again be pleasantly surprised and see many organizations or many people donating to many organizations in one go. <clears throat> Next, I would say, you know, those virtual day of events, they can reach new people and they can engage those new people in information about your organization. So like I said just a few minutes ago, last year I saw so many innovative events happening on the day of and it was amazing and I was super upset to be quite honest that I had to focus on back-end AZ Gives Day and I couldn't participate. But I saw things like walks, I saw cook-ups, I saw art classes, games, trivia, concerts, and performances. Pretty much anything you can think of, I saw. And so if you have the ability to host one of these, I highly recommend it. 
if you are an organization that did host one of these last year, please feel free to make a note in the chat about what worked and what didn't work um, so that we can hear any suggestions you have. Now, all of this is with the caveat that doing these things can help bring in new audiences, but it isn't the best way to find a large number of new people to engage with your organization. So we move on to the biggest questions that we always receive, which are about social media. And the question is, do we really need to use social media? So before I answer that, I'm gonna go over some of the numbers. And before I even do that, I just wanna state, I recognize that social media is really problematic, right? We don't wanna fund big businesses. However, as nonprofits, we sometimes need to figure out the best way to reach people um, that doesn't cost a ton of money. So you kind of have to weigh all that and make your own decision. But let's talk about how much advertising costs. So on average, if you wanted to find new people by purchasing email lists, they range in price from $100 to $400 per thousand emails. And that price reflects the quality of the audience that, that you still don't really know if those are people who are going to be your donors. Plus, as you can see here, <clears throat> the data from 2019 nonprofits uh, benchmarks survey tells us that for every thousand fundraising emails sent, uh, nonprofits get $45 back in revenue. So that's from 2019. I'm going to drop a link to that study in the chat box. So if you want to go dig through that, that's more. MNR, or that's there for you. MNR bench, benchmarks, they are uh, one of the bigger studies that exist for nonprofit marketing. So I highly recommend pulling that data if you want. <clears throat> Now you could say you want to advertise using Google, especially because so many of you probably already qualify for free Google grants and have that. And the cost isn't super expensive. It's one to $2 per click. But if you have Google grants and you have it set up, you know it is a pain and it takes so much time to get it up and running in a way that is effective. And most people don't actually have it running effectively. Not to mention, if you wanted to use it to drive people to use, to donate on your Arizona Gives profile so that you could win potential power hours, this isn't the way you could do it because it has to drive to your website. So even though it could potentially be free, there's so much setup time that it actually isn't free. And then, I mean, we all have a dream of being able to buy as many ad buys as we want, especially in print, but print is expensive. So um, even cheap ads can run you at least $500. And those for sure, like you don't know who you'll be reaching. You don't know if they're likely to donate. Additionally, if you're a small organization, these print ads, they're probably just way completely out of your budget. But if we talk about social media, and I'm going to focus here on Facebook and Instagram because they're the easiest in terms of advertising. Your average cost per click is $1.72. So that means that if you were flush with cash and you decided you wanted to spend the $500 that you could have spent on a print ad in social media, then you could lead to getting almost 300 or more clicks on social media. And a click really means that those people saw your ad and they thought that it was compelling. So they're already interested in your content versus all those other, other than email, we don't know if they're interested in you. We just don't know. So my answer to do we really need to use social media is no, you don't need to use social media and you don't need to pay for advertising. However, if you're going to advertise and you're on a tight budget, I would recommend using social media over all other options just because of the affordability of it. 
That being said, there are best practices that you need to do, um, regardless of whether or not you're using, you're using social media as paid advertising or you're using free functions. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Yeah, Bethany, I just saw your note come up. You don't even know if you have made any money from print ads. Yeah, it's so hard to determine your ROI on those, your return on investment that, I mean, I'm, I feel like, especially for nonprofits, like print ads are, you gotta have a lot of money and you gotta really be willing to take that risk. Um, so the next question we get asked is, should we pay to advertise? So, Advertising is a difficult choice for everyone, but the main question I would have in response to yours is, do you have the budget to advertise? But I will also say, if you don't have your budget, you could ask your board. So many organizations will immediately say, oh no, we definitely don't have that budget. We can't, you know, we just don't have the funds to advertise anywhere. But I will say, that um, have you asked specifically for funding from people for this? This is something that, you know, people's brand awareness is huge. People need to know that you exist to be able to want to fund you. And most people don't ask for funding for marketing in particular, but you can reach significant numbers of people on social media for very little money and the more people you reach, the more you're going to have volunteers, the more you're going to have donations. So I really do suggest if you don't have a budget, ask your board. You could ask them to donate between $25 and $100 each. And this could pay for significant advertising on social media. And like I said, you know, it doesn't take that much to go a long way on Facebook and Instagram in particular. Now, if you're planning on doing a marketing campaign this year, I do recommend a likes campaign if you're looking to reach new donors. Um, the average cost of a likes campaign is about 20 cents per like. So that's super affordable. Um, and I do recommend doing incentives because they help increase the chance of getting likes. Um, I do recommend using the Facebook invite button. So when someone engages with your content, if you click on the like symbol, you can see whether or not they're already following your page or there's a button that says invite and that invites them to follow you. Um, I also suggest using a lookalike audience and lookalike audiences are, <clears throat> Facebook uses their algorithm to be able to pull data from the people who already follow your page to then create an audience that looks very similar so that when you pay for that ad it goes to people who are going to be most like the people who already follow you um likes campaigns in general um, if you were to use a budget of $50 and you want to focus on getting those new audiences, then that means that on average for a like campaign, you could get 250 new followers for $50. So that's a significant growth. Um, and then I also recommend if you're happy with how many followers you have, you can do boosts of posts that are already performing well organically. So that means it's already reaching a large audience. People are already liking it, sharing, commenting. And these boosts, they can be targeted. So you can target to uh, the people who already follow your organization and their like-minded friends um, and not necessarily new people. So you can make sure that they see your posts, especially when, as of right now, only about 4% of your followers will see your posts organically. So boosts are definitely the way to, um, to go with that. Now, I could have created you some fancy, you know, documents that tell you exactly how to do all of these things. But um, what I'm going to tell you is that Facebook changes how to do things all the time. So I'm gonna really suggest you use the Facebook business help 
I dropped that link in the chat for you. Um, I find that whenever I create a how-to, that it's basically obsolete within a month or two. So um, feel free to use that link, but also if you have further questions after you've gone there or if you can't find an answer, then feel free to email me. My email will be up on the screen at the end and then um, I am happy to assist. Finally, if you don't wanna pay for advertising, then something that you can do is consider creating some private Facebook groups that are for your followers. So people who are part of private groups on Facebook see those posts first in their newsfeed over anything else. So it allows people to see more of your content um, in a way that's more organic and you don't have to pay for those advertising groups or advertising posts. Now, speaking of groups, I'm just gonna promote us real quick right here. We have opened our 2021 participant Facebook group. So if you haven't joined already, please feel free to do that. You do have to um, be uh, approved in the AZ Kids platform before we can add you. So, and be sure to answer the questions. If you don't answer the questions, I can't let you in. <clears throat> And then our next question that we always get is, how many social media platforms should we use? And I'm gonna be honest, I don't necessarily have the answer for you because it depends on your organization. So do you have dedicated staff or volunteers who already know how to use pla these platforms? If you do, use what they know. Do you have platforms that you're already active on? If you do, use the ones that you're already active on. Um, it's not always the right time to use every single platform and not every single platform will give you the best return. So really think about what platform works best for you. So my short answer is um, as many platforms that you can do well and completely. So you wanna make sure that these platforms are ones that you understand, you know how to post on them, you can do it regularly. Um, your posts are gonna look good. You have at least a small audience already. Or if you want to start working on a platform, you know what your rollout is gonna be. You have a plan for what um, your campaigns are going to look like. Now, if you haven't started thinking about that, just a quick plug for what we've done previously. Um, we, did last month, um, we did a communications planning template for you. Um, so here is just the top. It helps you kind of see what your campaign objectives are going to be. Um, it helps you see what, uh, what, what platforms might work for you and what your goals are. So that's located here. Um, this will also be available in the follow-up email that I'll be sending later today. Additionally, if you say, oh, well, you know, I, we already have done this planning template, but now, you know, we really need a plan a template to help us understand like what we're going to post where and when. I have a template for you there too. So this is a template that Jen and I use when we're planning our social media posts for Arizona Gives Day. It's simple, it's easy to use, um, and it can be adapted for any organization. So you can see we've got the date, we've got the posting location, we've got the content, we've got the image, um, and that's pretty much all you need. And you can share it once it's done. The link for that is here, and again, that will be available in the follow-up email that I'll be sending later today. <clears throat> so then finally, well, not finally, we have a lot more to go, but um, we always get asked, how can we stand out? So one of the top things you really need to make sure is that you're running your business from a business page. Do not use a personal page. You can't, you don't have the analytics available to you on personal pages. You don't have ad resources available to you. 
So if you're a regional affiliate of a national or a worldwide organization, then definitely reach out to your larger organization and ask them what they can do to help, um, you know, to help you market this event and help you be successful in this season. I will say it's really important that you are consistent. So decide how many posts you're gonna do in a day, decide what times, um, decide what that the look is gonna be consistently the same um, so that your audience knows what it is that they're gonna be looking for. You wanna make sure that you have great photos and you have great videos. There are many, many options where you can find free photos if you don't personally have any photos that you can use for your organization. You know, if you Google free photos, a million different websites pop up. Um, so go through, find five to 10 that you can repeatedly use that fit with your mission, fit with your organization. If, especially if you don't have your own. Videos, like I said, use Zoom. Everyone's got it and it's free, um, especially if you are gonna do under 40 minutes and it makes it really easy to record. Make sure when you're posting, you have clear call to actions. So um, not every post you have will probably need a call to action. However, when it's applicable, it should have one. So make sure they know donate here, uh, follow us here, sign up for our newsletter here. So then that way people know exactly what you want them to do with each post and how to engage. You wanna be succinct. So with social media, people don't read, right? They like pretty photos, they like some video. Um, you want that text to be as short as you possibly can and still make sense. You want to tell a story about your organization's impact on the community. So we want to make sure that the people who follow you know what your organization does. Um, because we just, we can't, the Alliance in general, we can promote, but last year we had almost a thousand nonprofits. Um, who were registered. We can't promote a thousand nonprofits, right? That just isn't feasible. So we do our best, but at the same time, you need to be the one who's gonna tell your story. And then we get asked how often and when do you post uh, on social media? And to be quite honest here, there is no good answer. So my answer for you is, uh, what does your data say? Because I can't tell you that, right? So if you go into your Facebook analytics data, so if you're on your page and you click insights, uh, you're gonna see a page that does not have this, but you're gonna see uh, a list of about five posts. And at the bottom of that, if you click see all posts, then this will show up at the top of that page that it takes you to. The nice thing about this tells you how many followers you have across each day that are active, but it also gives you a graph of when they're active, right? So for most organizations, people are really active between the hours of like six and eight. And then after that on each end, it kind of tails off. But I will say it's definitely worthwhile looking at this data for your organization because there have been weird organizations like uh, there's been some restaurants or some cleaning organizations or cleaning products, et cetera, that once they um, did this analytics, they found that their most followers were at like one in the morning. So that's when they were posting, like they had a, a staff that was up posting, interacting with people super late at night. So it's definitely worthwhile double checking this and seeing 
In terms of how often, I can tell you on the average number of posts for nonprofits in 2019, based on that benchmark data I gave you earlier, is somewhere between one and three posts a day, depending on the organization and what really works for them. But I will say that if you can't do one a day, then you can do one every other day or one every two days, or you could just do uh, once like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then maybe you don't post it all on the weekends. So it's really just what's going to work for you. Um, and and then we have, yes. We had one question come in that um, is uh, relevant to this. What are the pros and cons to using a post scheduling uh, program like a Hootsuite? And there are others out there, obviously. Yeah, there are so many. So um, the pros are that you can kind of set it and forget it. And especially if you use many platforms, it can make it much easier for you to figure out uh, when you're going to post uh, and share posts across all platforms. So we just used, um, uh, we just started using Hootsuite because we uh, have hey, um, can I get an egg many, muffin? many Arizona gives day platforms and we also have many Alliance platforms. Um, so it's really, it makes my life easier because I can see all those different platforms in one place. They are expensive and they do weird things sometimes. So, <laughs> um, Nonprofits um, can usually get a discount. However, like sometimes link posts won't post properly. Um, so it's really just, do you need it? If you're just posting on Facebook and Instagram, you can use Business Suite within Facebook and that'll post to both of them. And that's, to be quite honest, the best way to go. Um, but if you're using more platforms, then it might be worthwhile to look at others. I also like Hootsuite because it gives me a lot more analytics that I definitely can't always um, pull easily out of Facebook or Instagram on my own. So uh, if you really want analytics too, then I do suggest those platforms. Um, we had another uh, comment really, the one to three posts a day, but is that equally applicable to Facebook and Instagram? That's a, yeah, so that's, um, I believe that analysis was on Facebook, um, maybe Instagram, but I would say what I'm seeing as, um, as a rule is I'm seeing a lot of people or a lot of organizations posting more. So um, you don't want to inundate your audience. You want to kind of evenly spread those out, but I would definitely say one to three across platforms is pretty safe. And yeah, uh, I see and then a I note just that, bring, yes. Oh, sorry, hmm. bring attention to the question about the free photos. So there was a question as to what someone should look for. Um, and they asked if they needed to be about their business or photos that they actually took. And um, we had a really great response from one of our um, audience members here that said, if you can have them be personal and of your business, that's best. But if you can use a stock photo um, that evokes who you are and who you serve and what you do, then that work can work just as well. Yes, I agree with that 100%. Um, also, if you want to make your life easy, um, you know, the easiest, most affordable photo editor and video editor is Canva. Um, and if you only want to crop everything to one size that works best for, um, for like all, most platforms, then I definitely just rec uh, recommend cropping everything into a square. It makes life the easiest for everybody. Yeah, and if you're not looking at the chat right now, there's some really great tips people are sharing in there too. So take note of those as well um, because they, they're they using some. Um, and I encourage you to, to uh, you know, if you wanna talk with one of these people that's providing some of the details, get their, ask for their email so you can talk with them after this call as well. So, For sure. And then once your organization is approved, also feel free to post these questions in our Facebook group. 
um, yep. and share what you've been using successfully in there as well. All right, Angela, continue. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so one other question that I get all the time is whether or not you actually need to respond to every single comment that people do on or make on social media. And I will say no, but. So the thing about social media, if you don't already know what I'm sure most of you do, but I'm just reiterating for the newbies, um, engagement on social media is measured using likes, comments, shares, and clicks. And the two that give the most weight are comments and shares. So if someone comments, then it does behoove you to reply because that is an additional comment on your post. Um, and then that means you get more engagement, which means more people will see it organically and you don't have to pay for a boost. Additionally, I will say, the more you engage with people who comment, the more likely they are to engage with you again. And the thing about social media is that it's social. We want people to engage with us. We want to be successful. Um, and so we need to encourage people's responses. Now, I will say, I do not always respond to every comment that exists on every post. However, um, if I don't comment, I will at least like those comments in acknowledgement that they said something that could potentially help us. That includes comments where people tag their friends so that it basically signals to the people who were tagged and the people who did tag that we are here for them. If they have questions, if they have comments, we are here to answer them. All right, the big question. Are Arizona Gives Day fundraising pages really worth it? As you probably know, I'm going to say yes and, right? This is a great way for employees, volunteers, and board members to be active in fundraising. It's easy, an easy way for people to support your cause and share their individual links. So really think about the popularity of Facebook fundraisers. Now, Facebook fundraisers are so problematic in so many different ways. Please don't get me started on that. But this is basically the same thing. All they're doing is they're sharing an individual link, right? We have organizations that have 50 plus fundraising pages and they take the time to do it because it works. So, the next question is, should we be spending time getting a matching grant? I will say, if you have the time and the capacity, yes. Real quick, in case you don't know, a matching grant is something where an organization, a donor, some sort of funder, a board member, et cetera, says they will give you a chunk of a large donation if you are able to raise that same amount individually on your own. So it's a yes and. So we wanna be sure to ask how you're gonna receive that grant. And you wanna make sure you have all the rules laid out. Will you get the entirety of the grant even if it isn't matched? What are the restrictions, right? There's lots of questions to ask. You wanna get all of that information. And who do you approach, right? So for matching grants, we've seen people approach local businesses. We've seen them approach board members. We've seen them approach past donors, especially large dollar donors. Um, so you could approach almost anyone. And as in most things, I firmly believe in asking because the worst thing that happens is that someone says no. But you really just wanna make sure you have those rules all laid out and ready to go. So that was a lot of information that I just threw at you. So I have some suggested next steps for you to think about. Um, you want to make sure you have a point of contact for marketing activities. We've seen that um, in the past, if there is a single point of contact, the organization tends to do better than if it's spread out over se several um, because that one person can take the responsibility on their shoulders. 
You want to complete the Arizona Gives Day communications planning template that will help you really figure out what you want to focus on this year for your Arizona Gives campaign. You want to complete any marketing camp, uh, marketing plans that you may potentially have in the works or um, are thinking about. And then you really want to start executing. Arizona Gives is coming up. We've only got a couple of months. And to be quite honest, you got to get it moving. Now is the time. Don't delay. Uh, and then just a heads up, we have a next workshop on January 25th. And that's going to be a focus on system updates and an exploration of the new functionalities that are going to be available to you. Um, and there are lots of new ones that are coming up that are pretty exciting. So in the meantime, if you have questions, feel free to ask them now. You can ask them in the chat. Um, if you feel brave, you can unmute yourself and I will bring up my images so I can actually see you now. Also, if you have future questions, then you can feel free to email me. So any of the resources that I sent you, if they aren't working, if they if you're having a hard time finding something that you need, then please feel free to shoot me an email. And I'm going to type my email in the chat box right now so you can copy and paste it. Um, and then also my email will be in the follow-up email that I'll be sending later today. And I'm going to stop my share so I can see everyone's faces because I'm talking at a screen of nothing. And then so we do have a question about uh, Canva. And uh, Pamel, thank you so much for putting that link in there. Canva is free for nonprofits. Um, and um, like she said, some other someone else said the approval does take a little bit of time. You do need to submit some um, paperwork for that, but we use Canva. It, it's an amazing tool. It has so many things built into it, but you can also uh, upload images um, to that as well. It's pretty intuitive uh, and easy to use. So. Um, I think you'll find a lot of organizations, no matter, regardless of the size, um, are using um, Canva as well. Um, there was another question about, I think, over. Did you talk about that one, Angela? I do not know over. Someone so I cannot talk asked, about it. Info on over info and, on over and Canva from Jolene. So, yeah. Mm hmm so Jolene, I do not know over to be able to tell you more, but if you would like Let's me see. to do an assessment, feel free to send me an email and I can look at it real quick. Sure, I just saw it from Haley. Um, I don't know if she's still on the call. So she has so, that, you mentioned that. Haley says it's similar to Canva, but she's not sure if there are pro features. Hi, um, this is Haley. Yeah, I have only used over a couple of times, but what I like about it is that not as many people use it. Um, and a lot of times with Canva, you'll see the same uh, templates kind of recycled over and over again. Um, so um, yeah, it's just a, a nice alternative that has different templates uh, and graphics from Canva. Yeah, Haley, I'm with you on that. So I definitely think that if you're going to use a tool like Canva or Over or anything else, definitely make sure you make things custom to yourself. So um, that's something that we do. You know, we upload our own photos. We change the colors to match what we want. We add different um, imagery like weird stick art or whatever, like all of that, we kind of change on our own. I almost said wingdings, which I feel like dates me. <laughs> um, but we add all of those things. So I definitely recommend like, if you use one of those, make sure that you're doing the customizations to make it look like it's from your organization and not from someone else. Um, the nice thing with Canva is that pretty much everything that's on there, you can change the color, you can change the font, you can move different aspects around. So even if you use a template, there's a lot that you can vary. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to also bring up that, you know, even after all of this and we're, you know, giving you some templates, you may be saying, oh my gosh, how do I keep doing online fundraising? How do I keep up with this? I don't know if I can take this over. 
Um, and you may or may not have attended our workshop for Arizona Gives in November, um, but we have partnered with a group called Gratitude, who actually, it's a, it's a monthly service. Um, but you can get a, a discount to start with, so two months for free, actually, um, that actually will help you create a plan, not just for Arizona Gives, they're very familiar with Giving Days, but for the year. So they can actually help you with all of your online um, fundraising campaigns specifically um, and help you with emails. They can help you with uh, social, et cetera. So all of that is on the um, azgives.org backslash training page. So that training page um, has a link there. The, the uh, workshop is there. And to be honest, they provided a lot of really great tools and, and feedback on marketing. Um, but wanted to let you know about that. Another option, um, if you know that's not something that you can afford, although I think it could pay for itself and above that, uh, if you use them, is uh, groups like Taproot Foundation. Um, Taproot is where you can submit a project. It usually tends to be no more than a 90-day project window, um, but it doesn't. It pairs you with someone who can assist you with that particular project. So maybe it is creating a campaign of some sort. Um, it really depends on the scope and the depth of what you're asking for. But there are a few other options out there. If you're going to want to use Taproot, um, I would do that this week uh, so that you can get someone uh, started and hopefully you can be matched and paired with an individual. So just those are a couple um, couple options for you. So Gratitude, yeah, so it's spelled um, GLAD this and then I-T-O-O-D. <laughs> oh, I spelled it slightly wrong. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I'll I'll put it out here, but it's on that training um, training link if you want to check it out. It was also in the email we sent out this morning. So if you're looking, um, it's there. Um, but yeah, so I feel like you know there's a lot that you can do for marketing, both for free or for very little money. So I'm hoping that some of you went from you know not sure to either yes or no today. Um, and, you know, like I said, if you have questions, I am more than happy to assist. Feel free to send me an email. Um, and I'm available whenever you need me. And I, I've also seen groups seek out an intern. I've seen groups um, also, you know, if it's an all volunteer run, I know a few recru recruited some uh, board members recruited uh, a family member that they knew maybe was had a little bit more expertise and that was volunteer time for mm -hmm. uh, that individual to help with their social. And it could be just one particular aspect that you need. Maybe you've got emails in the bag and you know how to do all the, the emails and communication, but you just need help um, with Facebook or doing some of the paid advertising, but figure out what works for your organization. Oh, yeah. So peer to peer. I know Angela brought that up. So our next workshop is actually on the 25th, I believe. It's in the email that we sent out. And um, it's going to be about all of the system upgrades that we have happening and going on, including peer to peer fundraising. So we're doing a massive improvement. Um, for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. We're hoping to make it much easier, not only for the person doing the, creating the fundraising fundraiser page, but also providing additional data for you um, as the nonprofit. Because right now, the, the information you had on all of those fundraiser pages was pretty limited, to be honest. Um, so we are going to be um, improving that. So you're going to see a little bit more data on the back end um, for the fundraiser pages. And so we're hoping that that will help all of you with that. Um, we have one particular group who um, had a youth leadership uh, group and they ran their entire uh, Arizona Gives campaign. It was probably about 25 high schoolers created fundraiser pages, and they had their own fun and internal campaign. 
I think the most they raised one year was about twelve to thirteen thousand um, dollars. Just and all of that came in through their fundraiser pages. Um, those can be used in a variety of ways. They're, they were originally intended to be used for uh, individuals. However, if you have multiple locations potentially as an organization, you could create a, a separate fundraiser page for that location um, and have uh, more detail information. There is the ability to put photos and a video um, up there as well. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use those, but all of that feeds into your grand total for your organization. And we're going to have the system upgrade, uh, which includes peer-to-peer -peer on February 25. And then um, I'm also looking into and working on securing at the end of February, having uh, someone do um, a workshop specifically on uh, fundraiser pages is what we call them. Uh, in the nonprofit world, we like to call them peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, but the, the public doesn't really understand that term. Uh, so we tend to use fundraiser pages um, for these or campaigns. And I think that language is changing this year, right? Yep, fundraiser pages yep. is what we're, what we're <laughs> moving to. Because we, uh, we and, and others that also do giving days have realized that peer-to-peer -peer is really a, uh, a fundraising term that we use. So, what? any other questions that we've got? We've got a couple minutes. If you don't have any questions, I have a question for you. So, we are toying with the idea of potentially hosting um, and this is coming from me, um, hosting a regular marketing training. So um, by the Alliance, so we could do that monthly, we could do that bi-monthly, we could do that quarterly. If you would like to see that, if you could put what your preference would be in the chat, then that would really help us understand um, interest levels. Thank you. All right, Michael, our capacity building director is on the team. So now he, he's got data. <laughs> and it could really be all different kinds of topics, anything from storytelling to social to email communication. Um, it could be all about tech and technology, things that people are using. Um, so could be about maybe, data. Could be about data. Yep. Well, all people. sorts of different. <laughs> Please collect your data. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, it's 11 o'clock. We thank you for joining us today. If you have questions about Arizona Gives, um, you can contact Angela, you can contact myself. We actually have Alicia Tang Mills on the call. She is assisting us with Arizona Gives this year. She joined our team in December. Say hi, Alicia. <laughs> And uh, you can always email us at azgives at arizonanonprofits.org and we will answer your questions. So have a wonderful day.